If you ever wanted to embrace a teenager within you, to deal with the world in absolute categories, then this topic is for you. Because when it comes to destructors, custom copy and move constructors, and custom copy and move uh, assignment operators of a class, it's uh, really about having all or nothing. <music> Jokes aside, in the previous video about move semantics, we had an example struct uh, that made use of a copy and move assignment operators. Turns out, there are rules to follow when implementing these operators and their friends. As a result, uh, the struct in that video did not really follow a good style. A logical question then seems to be, what is a good style? Long story short, good style is a style that helps us avoid mistakes and makes things easier to implement. There are many rules about good style when it comes to writing classes, but I don't want to state uh, these rules out of context. Rather, in the spirit of this course, let's build up to these good practices by formulating various rules of good style and summarize them uh, as a single easy-to-remember rule afterwards. In the previous lecture on move semantics, we had a struct a huge object that owned some big chunk of memory, and uh, today we're going to make it a class to ensure encapsulation, but other than that, it does the same things as before. It allocates uh, a chunk of memory in its constructor through some magic function allocate memory and uh, frees this memory in its destructor through some other magic function free memory. Just as before, their exact implementation is not important right now. But you can find their implementation in the script uh, to this video. Link is, as always, in the description. To help us down the line, we want uh, to be able to get to the address of the allocated memory. So let's add a function that uh, will give it to us. Note that such a simple getter function usually has a name of the variable it returns without the trailing underscore. Oh, and if you are confused about the return type of this function, give a lecture about the row pointers ago. One final preparatory touch, uh, let's also introduce a simple main function that creates a huge object instance and prints the address um, of the memory allocated for it. Note that the const in the ptr function allows us to call it on the constant object variable. Again, if anything here confuses you, then do refresh your knowledge on the object's lifecycle in one of the previous lectures. Now that we're done with the preparations, I would like to focus on the destructor here. What happens if it's missing? Right now, when an object is created, it allocates memory, and when it gets destroyed, it frees this memory. If we miss the destructor, free memory will not be called, and the memory will stay behind, causing a memory leak. This already gives us a glimpse into our first rule. If we acquire resources manually in the constructor, we must have a destructor that releases these resources. Note that even with this destructor in place, we still must explicitly state here that this class does not follow the best practices. And let's figure out why. To illustrate an issue with our class, we will change our main function a little bit again. If we introduce another object of the huge object type and initialize it as a copy of our existing object, the code will compile but will crash when we run it. Let's unpack this. First of all, why does it even compile in the first place? There is no constructor for huge object class that takes another instance of huge object class. And yet it still compiles, so what's going on here? The reason is that the compiler is trying to be helpful. A constructor that takes a constant reference to the current type is called a copy constructor, and the compiler generates a trivial copy constructor for our class if none is provided by the user. So what do we mean by trivial? Um, it means that uh, it is just copies all the variables from one object to another without giving it a second thought. Uh, we could even write one ourselves. Essentially, in our case, a trivial copy constructor would take a constant huge object reference and will copy the lengths and the pointer of our new object. Note how we can use private members of another object here, as uh, we're still within the same huge object class, even though we're dealing with a different instance of this class. Those of you who watched the video on move semantics carefully might already notice the issue with such a trivial constructor. Really, try to figure this one out before watching further. Do rewatch the move semantics video if needed. I'll wait. Hope you got it by now. The issue is that the trivial constructor just copies over the pointer to a different object, but not the data. So now we have two objects pointing to the same data, and both of these have destructors that will try to remove these data. So in our case, the destructor of the other object will succeed at freeing the memory, but the destructor of the object will try to free the memory that has already been freed. 
causing a runtime error that mentions something along the lines of freeing the memory twice, or double free. Let's dig a little into why this happened. The reason for this error is that there is a number of functions that we use to actively manage the resources that a certain object owns. In our case, we have a constructor that allocates memory and a destructor that frees this memory. What we missed here is that we also need to actively manage memory when copying our object. A trivial copy constructor does not do it. It just copies the pointer. So here is our new rule. If we manage resources manually in our class, we need a custom copy constructor. For completeness, let's add the missing proper copy constructor to our class. It needs to copy the length of the allocated memory, allocate the needed amount of memory, and copy the content of the incoming object's data into this newly allocated memory. The question is, though, can we remove the annoying comment now? And unfortunately, still not yet. Let me illustrate by changing our main function again. Instead of creating another object by copying object directly, we will first create a new object and only then assign object to it. If we now compile and run this code, we will get exactly the same runtime error as before. I know that at this point it's very tempting to just flip the table and never return to C++ again, but actually nothing too magical happens here. It's just that the helpful compiler generates more than just a trivial copy constructor, it also generates a trivial copy assignment operator which we actually have already seen in the previous video. And the situation here is even worse than uh, with the copy constructor. Not only we have a runtime error when our objects get destroyed, but we also have a memory leak from the moment we perform the assignment. The memory allocated for the other object is never freed as nothing points to it. Fixing this is as easy as it was with the copy constructor. We just need to write our own custom copy assignment operator. It's very similar to the copy constructor with just a couple of differences. It returns a reference to huge object and performs two additional steps. It needs to check if we are trying to perform a self-assignment, meaning that we are trying to assign the object to itself. And it needs to free the memory if we had any allocated from before, uh, fixing the memory leak that we've just talked about. Other than that, it copies the lengths, allocates new memory, and copies the memory of the incoming object into this uh, newly allocated memory just as a copy constructor. This actually brings us to the third rule. If we manage resources manually in our class, we need a custom copy assignment operator. If you live in a world where you only use C++ versions before 11, then you could stop here, but in the modern world we are missing a big chunk from this topic. You might have already guessed what it is, it's the move semantics. Just as compiler generates implicit copy constructor and assignment operator, it also, sometimes, generates implicit move constructor and assignment operator, although in slightly different circumstances. It only generates them if the user has defined no explicit destructor or copy constructor and assignment operator. But it still might cause problems to us, so let's dig into that. Let's return back to our main function that uh, used a copy constructor and modify it again by adding the std move uh, to our object when passing it to the other object, to make sure that we're using a move constructor of our huge object class. And while we're at it, um, let's also print the address of object after move. When we run it, we see that the other object pointer points to an address different from where the object pointer points to, even after the move. If you remember the lecture about the move semantics, this is not what we want. We want the other object to steal the data from object. Right now, it sure looks like the data is just copied over. And this is indeed the case, which you can verify by adding a printout to our copy constructor and see that it's actually called. The reason for this is that the compiler will only generate a move constructor if there is no custom destructor and no custom copy constructor and assignment operator. Uh, by now our class has all of these. So the compiler will not generate a move constructor for us, and the R value reference will just bind to the normal L value reference in our existing copy constructor. So we will perform an unnecessary copy. So how do we make our class movable? By now we already know what to do. We know that we just need to write a custom move constructor, and that should be it. We write it in a very similar way to the copy constructor, with slight difference that we take an R value reference uh, to huge object as input, don't copy the data, and set the other object's pointer field to null pointer. Again, we covered this in depth in the move semantics video. It is clear that we must have another rule about this move constructor. If we manage resources manually in our class, we need a custom move constructor. 
Remember how once we had a copy constructor, we also needed a copy assignment operator? Would you be surprised if I told you that the same story repeats here? I'd like to leave the implementation of a move assignment operator to you as a small homework. I'm sure uh, you are going to be able to piece it together from this and the move semantics video. If you get stuck, the full code is in the script to this video, as always. Anyway, once you are done with that, you will know that there is one last rule that we need. If we manage resources manually in our class, we need a custom move assignment operator. Don't forget that after you're done implementing the move assignment operator, while there are still some things to improve about our class, we can actually remove the annoying comment at the top, as the rest of the improvements are pretty minor in comparison. It's time we summarize our findings. We might notice here that all of these custom functions rely on the fact that we have to manage some resource of an object manually. In summary, we can reformulate all of the previous rules as just a single one. If we manage some resource manually, we must implement the following. A custom destructor, a custom copy constructor, a custom copy assignment operator, a custom move constructor, and a custom move assignment operator. This rule is also then known under the name of the rule of five, as there are five special functions here. This was known as a rule of three before move semantics was introduced, though. An alternative way to think about this rule is to think that if we find that we need to implement just one of the special functions, then we most likely need to implement all the rest of them. That being said, I want to stress that we actually nearly never manage our resources manually. And if we don't manage them manually, there is no reason to implement any of these special functions we've just discussed. So instead of the rule of five, I prefer talking about the rule of all or nothing. Don't define custom destructor, copy or move constructor, or copy or move uh, assignment operators. If just one of them needs to be defined, explicitly define the rest of those operations. This is a simple rule to follow, and I hope that you now also understand why it is needed. We will touch more upon it when we start talking about polymorphism in the context of object-oriented programming, but for now, that's basically everything that I wanted to talk about. So thanks again for following along, and uh, feel free to leave a comment uh, if you liked something or if you think that something could be improved. I really value that type of feedback. Apart from that, I guess see you in the next video. Bye!